I want blue me to do well. I feel like he's a trier, God bless him. I want white me to win, and I want red me to die <laughs> in an automobile accident. <laughs> My house is actually quite famous because it's, it's the exact house that the devil appeared and was playing cards in. Well, Mrs. Baker, it's good you called me when you did because I think I've just solved your husband's murder. I know this might not appear like much to the average person, but my keen detective vision has figured this out. I big brain detective, big brain. And I know it doesn't look like much to you, but there's one simple clue in what we found here. You see, this is German. So once you look out for anyone with an accent, you should be fine. Well, <laughs> That's that mystery solved. How can I trust you when you don't even have pants on? No, oh, well, I, um, I usually only get seen from the waist up, so I, I actually, I don't really own any pants. Um, I just have these shorts and that, that's kind of it. But, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's your husband's murder solved. Yippee. <laughs> oh, what a great day. Um, all right, I got other mysteries to solve on a Sherlock Holmes video game, so... I'm going to skedaddle, you know, be out of your hair, Mrs. Baker, or Ms. Baker now, because, you know, your, your husband's dead. It's a little detective humor. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to head out. Uh, see you later, and um, best of luck with the whole widow thing, you know. Bye-bye. I can't even spell my name. It's like K3V1... Zed. Oh, he might have went on living, but he made one fatal slip When he tried to match the hitman with the big fish on his hip The big fish on his hip I want to see a farmer up there, like with a new crazy invention Like a potato, but like a smart potato that like tells you when to eat it or something Something wild. God, I should be a dragon Ah, yes. Hold music. <laughs> My second favorite genre. Only second to royalty-free music. They're one and the same, really, I guess. Oh, we're getting another loop of it. How nice. Ah, that's good. This song slaps, too. Wouldn't mind breaking out a dance for that. You know, I will break out a dance for that. That's yeah. All right. Okay. This is... Fun game. So I'm gonna feed him some jelly. Oh my god, he really likes jelly. Oh my god, he loves jelly. We may have lost, uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 20, 25 people, but I won't lose anymore. <laughs> These girls look psychotic. The audience look like demons. Howie Mandel looks like a bobblehead. And Turg looks like Turg. It's not only Elmo that's cooked up. <laughs> it seems like Sesame Street has a serious coke problem. Well, come with me. I'll take you there. <laughs> no fucking <laughs> way, dude. During a storm, a ship unexpectedly arrived at the Hook Peninsula where the mansion was located. A young man was welcomed into the mansion and the young man became very close. But one night, the family and the mysterious man were in the game room playing cards. In the game, each player received three cards, apart from Anne, who was only dealt two by the mystery man. A butler serving the Tottenham family at the table was just about to question the man when Anne bent down to pick another card from the floor which she must have dropped. It is said that when Anne bent over to pick up the card, she looked beneath the table to see that the mysterious man had a cloven foot. Red eyes. Could he be crying because his father left him? No, it's obviously conjunctivitis. Hey kid, you wanna see some numbers? Get in the van. Good luck. I'll meet you by the common room later. Finally, Ron does something for a change. Oh, he just disappeared when he got to the corner. Nice. Hey, guys, I'm new here. <laughs> just walking into the gym like, how do they do, Dilly? I'm here to win some boxing matches. They're like, where's this guy's accent from? I am from one of these. <laughs> you may not know this, but I'm actually a former businessman. So if there's one thing I know, it's marketing. And my big business brain told me there was only one thing to do. Print some flyers and hit the streets. 
I filled a few local neighborhoods with some flyers, hoping that I'd get the surge I needed to get caught up in the YouTube algorithm. Unfortunately, some of the polls in the neighborhood were being used by other posters. But this is business, and in business, you can't let things get personal. Now that I'd covered as much ground as my unathletic body would allow me, all I had to do was sit back and wait for the subscribers to roll in. You just can't beat that feeling of doing a fantastic job.